everyone. Welcome back once again. So I'm sure you know that we are still trying to make ourselves connect with the audience and express ourselves, right? So let's just quickly take a look at what all we have studied or learned so far. So we saw if we have to connect with our audience and or express ourselves, we need to start our speech with a either a quotation or a biblical a quotation or a story or um, of data, facts and figures, okay? So opening is important, closing is important, wherein we would want them to take some action or learn something, uh, inform them about something, but then ending needs to be summarized, okay? Of whatever you have told in, the, in your speech, you will have to summarize it and tell to your audience. So opening, closing, and then how do you make yourself clear, the clarity in your speech. Apart from that, we also saw that we need to emphasize on certain words, okay? And then we also looked at how should we be maintaining our pitch. We had done a session on pitch earlier also, but this was all with lots and lots of examples. Now what we are going to do is we are going to see that how should we be using the pause, okay? And pauses are very important. So pause and par, pace, pause and par is what we are going to look at now. Okay, so let's just quickly see what all we are going to learn. All right, so it's pace, pause, and par. Now you must be wondering that pace, pause, and par, how does it help us connect and express? I will take you through that, do not worry. So let's just once again look at the word pace, pause, and par. Okay, in English we call it par or if you want to pronounce it in an Indian English, so we'll call it power. Okay, but it's actually par. Pace, pause and par. Okay, I'm going to read this and you, you will be, I think you'll be annoyed if I read it like this. Here how it clears the point of faith, we're rattling and thumping. Now he meets calm. Now while in a wrath, he's stamping and he's jumping. Could you understand? Could you make out anything of whatever I have read? Unless it's written here and you are made to read rather than listen to me, then only you will be able to make out something that I've written. Otherwise, it's all Hebrew for you, okay? It's all jumbled, you could not understand what I said. All right, so what is pace now? Now let me read this entire thing once again. Hear how he clears the points of faith with rattling and thumping. Now, meekly calm. Now, wild in wrath, he's stamping and he's jumping, okay? So I have taken pauses, means I have stopped in, in certain words, during uh, the utterance of certain words, so that it becomes clear for my audience to understand. I'm not here to show that I can speak fast. My intent is to make my audience understand what I'm saying, all right? So pace is an important aspect <clears throat> of public speaking because we are trying to make ourselves clearer, okay? When we say clarity, there are a lot of things that come into picture. Out of that, pace is one of the most important things. There are people who speak really fast. There are people who speak really slow. And what I am trying to say here is, we will neither be very fast nor we will be really slow. Because if you are very fast, our audience will not be able to understand what we are saying. If we are very slow, you know, it sounds boring if you find somebody talking very slowly. I mean, maybe you'll take a nap and then get off and uh, wake up and then still the speaker is talking, okay? So moderation is what we need. Now let's look at how uh, we should take pauses. What are the various kinds of pauses that we should take as speakers? Okay. Now, uh, you must have heard of this word called tempo. Now, tempo is not something that we ride on. Tempo here means rate of movement, movement of our speech, not our movement, okay? So, when, when something else moves, it's uh, things move, tempo is used for that. But when our speech movement, the words, the how fast or slow the words move, that is what tempo is. So, it's a, it's a definition, it's a mean to define our speed okay when a speaker delivers a whole address at a very nearly the same rate of speed he is depriving himself of one of his chief means of emphasis and power 
So we had seen this word called emphasis. The more you emphasize on certain words, the better it is for your audience to understand. So if a speaker maintains same speed, okay, delivers a whole address at a very nearly the same rate. So there is no tempo. Uh, neither he's not going too fast, nor going too slow. He's maintained the same pace. Even then, it's not that um, pleasant to the ear. And then he is losing on to the two things, which is chief means of emphasis and power. So why am I saying power? Because with your speech, you can become powerful. You can show your leadership skills. That is why this power thing is here. Okay. So when you're when as a speaker, you do not maintain proper tempo. That is movement of your words, entire speech that you are talking in, and you are delivering at the same pace. Without, at times you'll have to be real, a, a bit fast. At times you'll have to be a bit slow because you want to emphasize on something. At times you have to be fast because obviously a speech has a paucity of time. That is how the speech becomes interesting. So take some time and think about people who you hear on a daily basis or if you have gone into looking at or hearing out people speaking, seasoned speakers, then see how they talk. What kind of pace do they maintain? What is the tempo, the rate of movement? Okay. Change of tempo. So when you bring in this change, like I said that in pitch, high, low, high, low, likewise, rate of movement too should be high and low. Okay. So change of tempo lends naturalness to the delivery. Otherwise, it looks very animated. Animated means as if you are trying to copy someone, you are trying to animate something. Okay. So when you use proper pace, okay, which is like tempo, change of tempo. So when you have to change your tempo, fast, slow, fast, slow, that lends naturalness to your delivery. Okay, so we are all talking about the pace here. All right. I can't recall. So I'm just reading this sentence here. And I'm maintaining a pace. I can't recall what I did with my knife. Oh, now I remember, I gave it to Mira. So I can't recall what I did with my knife. Pace. Oh, now I remember. I give it to Mira. Okay. So, when I have, here you see, now I remember, I give it to Mira. So, I sped up. But this entire line, because now I want my audience to, f to feel, okay, I'm trying to understand what I did with my knife. Okay. And when I've recollected, okay, I gave it to Mira, I can be a bit faster. All right. So that is what pace tempo is. Change of tempo often occurs in the same sentence like here. I can't recall what I did with my knife. Oh, now I remember. I gave it to Mira. So change of tempo can happen in the same sentence. All right. And that is how it makes um, your delivery look natural and not animated. For tempo applies not only to single words. It doesn't apply to single words unlike emphasis. It applies to groups of words and groups of sentences, but to the major parts of public speaking. So it applies to, to one whole new, maybe a section wherein you can apply your tempo. So it's not only um, kind of restricted to a, to a word or letters, okay, syllables. So it's in totality, in your total speech, you can use a major part of your total speech, you can change your tempo. All right. Now change of tempo, when you, whenever you change this pace of yours, it prevents monotony. And I've spoken about monotony earlier also. Whenever you bring in um, intonations, whenever you raise your voice, lower down your voice, whenever you bring in pitch, emphasis, all this break monotony. Likewise, tempo, the pace also breaks monotony. Okay, otherwise your audience will feel bored. Change of tempo produces emphasis. So it prevents monotony and it produces emphasis. You can emphasize on important words or parts of your speech. Okay, now we come to pause. So all this while we were taking care of or looking at pace. The speed with which we are, we talk. The speed with which we uh, utter any word or a sentence. And we have seen that 
it should break monotony it shouldn't look animated um, we should be in the same sentence we can change our tempo like any other uh, speech uh, vocal uh, things that we use in a speech all right now that we have taken care of the pace the speed with which we talk now we will look at the pauses that we need to take now what is a pause and we have dealt with this before but then it's kind of an advanced version of what pause we have learned pause in public speak is uh, speech is not mere silence it's not uh, remaining quiet okay it is silence made eloquent means it it is soothing to the ear when you are taking a pause it's soothing to the ear it makes your speech very nice eloquent okay i um now if i read this sentence i um it is with profound um pleasure um um that i have been uh, permitted to um to uh, to speak to you um tonight and um i should uh, say now whenever i am saying this um okay ah uh, all right or uh, okay uh these are all pauses but not required okay so these these are stumbling okay you're stumbling you're falling you're stumbling on something like when you walk and you come uh, you stumble upon a rock or a stone it's just like that you're stumbling because you're not getting the right kind of words these kind of speeches do not sound good to the ear and at times you uh, you know have seen speakers um, when they speak there are audience who because they use a lot of these ers uh, ums er and all that they keep noting and in schools also there are some naughty children who say that ma'am you have said 17 times a uh, um, in one in let's say one paragraph okay so you should not be using any of these um or uh, once or twice maybe out of you do not even know subconsciously you are talking but the more you practice the more this a uh, a uh, um er uh, all these will stop because these are not pauses and we should not be using these in our speech these are merely stumbles things we stumble upon one of the most important means of de developing power okay developing power in public speaking is to pause either before okay so i'm i'm emphasizing on each words because i want you all to understand pause either before or after or both before and after okay so if you want to become a good public speaker you should pause either before or after or both before and after an important word or phrase important word or phrase and when i read this particular sentence you must have noticed that i did the same thing i'm reading it once again for you one of the most important means of developing power in public speaking is to pause either before or after or both before and after an important word or phrase so when you speak like this it makes easier for your audience to understand what you're saying they will grasp it well okay and they will be able to take the action that you want them to take or they will be able to get the information you want them to take home for that reason pausing or using pauses at the right time is important now there are several kinds of pauses we use and there are uh, people who have defined these pauses you saw i said uh, um okay so there are there are people who have defined these or classified these pauses kinds of pauses that we use the first one being transitional okay now what is transitional transitional is kind of a pause which is used to notify the audience of a change in ideas both large and small okay so these kind of pauses uh, speakers take when they will have to make their audience understand that there is a change in ideas both large large po larger points and small research and connections length of the pause depends upon the size of the change let's take for example uh, i'm talking about students how how should students be preparing for the exams 
okay and i'm talking that every day you should get up at five o'clock you should take your book and start reading because early morning reading helps you retain more now if the same sentence i will have to put in some data you should wake up in the morning at five o'clock and try to study as much as possible because research has proved that 90 percent of your brain's retention power only occurs in the morning so i have given a data 90 percent okay that is where i have taken a pause because i want you all to understand that so this is transitional i'm taking you from one to another i'm transitioning i'm transitioning from you from one point to the other dramatic now there is something called dramatic it's all about like drama okay Pa dramatic pauses are used to add impact okay we are adding an impact to an idea let's say idea of rainwater harvesting or conservation of rainwater so you can use a pause to add an impact to that idea so i can say there are people across the globe who are making an attempt to conserve rainwater so i'm i'm supplementing that idea i have taken dramatic who are making an attempt to conserve rainwater all right can be used to gain attention usually for humor or to make a profound point that many people are doing this all right so when i use this i'm trying to make a point or i'm just trying to make the environment a bit lighter like asking probing questions of the uh, to the audience so whenever you ask a question to the audience that also falls into the category of dramatic pauses now in the same water uh, rainwater conservation if i want to make my points clear so i can throw a question also okay and i can ask now tell me friends how many of you have ever in your life conserved rainwater so i'm asking a question so i've taken a dramatic pause here okay so if i want to put across my point if i want them to uh, if i want to put in some humor in my speech or ask a question that is when i am doing a dramatic i am making a dramatic pause or taking a dramatic pause then impact a short pause used to create emphasis and interest emphasis and interest prior to verbally emphasizing certain words with tone and pitch and this is typically incorporated prior to numbers conjunctions adjectives and pronouns a short pause is inserted before verbal emphasis is added so if i have to define something so adjectives is all about giving a definition giving a meaning so i would say the profound silence in the room okay so whatever may, may be the next sentence or let let me complete it so it's it's a speech about someone who is uh, a disabled person and when he comes in performs yoga in front of the audience so the profound silence in the room when raj entered the auditorium with crutches could be felt so the profound silence could be felt so i'm trying to emphasize that this boy is in his crutches he has come and he is now going to perform yoga so i'm going to build an interest now that what is this guy going to do okay so there is a profound silence when raj enters the room with his crutches all right now and there are certain pauses which are not really planned we don't plan these pauses strategy a speaker incorporates so i have not decided that these are the pauses i will take so maybe i know the dramatic pauses i will take i'll throw a humor i'll ask a question or when i'm transitioning them from one idea to the other idea i want to give weightage to both the ideas okay now and then i want to emphasize on something there are some uh, some pauses which are used by the speaker on the spot depending on the situation one example could be when you see that your audience maybe is kind of distracted you take a pause when there is sudden lull lull is pause the audience will wonder what happened and then you can hear the, all the giggles okay because the speaker has stopped so seasoned speakers do this when they see that the audience they are unable to build a connect with the audience or maybe due to some reason the audience is distracted all right so strategy a speaker incorporates live on the spot live means on the spot to reset the focus or direction of the speech speaker stops spe uh, speaking and waits long enough to continue the speech as planned 
and these are not unplanned. Uh, these are not planned. These are unplanned. Uh, let's say I'm mm, uh, telling the same speech of this boy in crutches coming and performing yoga. You can, the, the speaker all of a sudden realized that irrespective of whatever he has done transitioning or whatever mode of pauses he has taken, he realizes that if I take this pause, I can, maybe it's a very emotional kind of a speech, the audience will be able to connect better. I'll be able to express myself better. So while he's talking, that Raj came, put his crutches and stood in front of the stage looking at the eyes of all the audience. Then you take a pause. I mean, he decided, okay, now let me take a pause and build that curiosity in my audience. So depending on the situation, the speaker takes these pauses. Whatever may be your um, idea behind taking these pauses, you should in your speech include pauses so that you can emphasize, you can make yourself clear, you can show your power, show your power as in when you are uh, speaking, you have an authoritative position, you are at an authoritative position. That is what power is, nothing else, okay? So you should be using pauses at the right place at the right time. At times, all of a sudden the speaker stops, which is unplanned, maybe because he or she has forgotten. So unplanned pauses can be taken, wherein maybe you have forgotten some, you have, you have memorized something and you have forgotten. You can take that pause, maybe throw a question and just try to recollect. As I have told you, you know, your brain has shelves. Just try to recollect from one of the shelves any other words that you can use instead of whatever you had planned for. So these pauses can also help you in getting back the thoughts which you are kind of getting disconnected from, okay? Now, pause enables the mind of the speaker to gather his forces before delivering the final words. So it helps you think through. It helps you get those right kind of words. So how, how pauses help? Pause prepares the mind of the audience to receive your message. When you take a pause, your audience is able to receive the message. Pause creates effective suspense. Okay, herein it was uh, an emotional speech about a boy. Now you can build in suspense. We will see in the storytelling session how to do all these things. So you can build in suspense. Did he or was he able to perform the yoga? What do you think? So pause can build in that suspense. Pausing after an important idea gives it time to penetrate. So if you are coming up with an idea of rainwater harvesting, restoration of uh, the, the environment or um, ozone layer, whatever related to environment, if you want them to think through, if you want these ideas to penetrate, penetrate means go inside the mind, then you should take a pause and let your audience think through. Let your audience understand the points, the, the relevant points you have mentioned. Okay, so this is all about pace, pause, and due to this pace, pace and pause, you have, you show your power of speech. Power doesn't have any other connotations or meanings here. Power here is the authority that, you, that has been vested on you or given to you to prove your points. So you will be able to prove your points and prove your authority by showing your power when you use proper pauses and when you maintain a good tempo, that is pace. Okay, so this is all about maintaining pace, pauses, taking pauses and creating authority or showing your power of speech and connecting with your audience as well as express yourself. In the next section, we will see, look at dictions that we can use and at, at the end, I'm going to tell you how to build that connect, how to express yourself using all these techniques and tell stories. So I'll see you on the other side. Thanks for watching.